Hi ladies, hi gents. This is Cindy, Palm Springs Cindy, and I'm making this video at kind of a crazy hour, but I've had a little bit of company and they just left. So I thought before I um, end up settling in for the evening, I thought it might be nice to, I wanted, I wanted to touch base with you because I have something I want, I need to talk to you about. And um, I have a couple things I want to share, but then I have a couple things that I really need to talk about and get your, get your opinion. Okay, first of all, um, you guys remember my uh, tooth situation that I had this, I had had this crazy toothache for so long. So, you know, long story short, I finally went to an endodontist. He ended up pulling three teeth out. And, um, and then I, and preparing my gum, my, my lower gum for, um, you know, the teeth, the crowns to go in. So it's been a little over three months. And, and so I, I had to go to the, go to the endodontist today and he, he, um, this, this is kind of what I wanted to get at. Um, I wasn't really prepared to have Novocaine. And so when he said he was going to deaden me, I, I was kind of like, ugh. But, and I went, ugh, because I was foolish enough one time, I was curious about Novocaine and, uh, cause I know those needles are really long. <laughs> so I had to investigate. And I, I YouTubed, uh, giving Novocaine or deadening the patient's mouth or something like that. And I ended up watching these videos that were actually teaching videos for upcoming dentists. And so I watched the tutorial on giving Novocaine. Oh my gosh. And about how they teach the dentist the sites you know, like two fingers past this mark or up here and so many millimeters hits this particular nerve. That's where you need to shoot the needle and then move it this way. Well, I was flabbergasted when I watched this teaching video. And so I thought, why did I do that? I'm never gonna wanna get, I'm gonna be totally freaked out the next time I have to get Novocaine, which was today. So, um, so I said, okay, you know, okay. Okay, and so he, but he didn't give me, he didn't like go out to another room and prepare the potion. He just like, he must have had it in his hand. So I said, um, well, I'm going to close my eyes so I don't see the needle. And he said, okay. He said, you're going to feel two pinches. So I thought, okay, you know, and, and I did, you know, I felt a pinch. It was no big deal. And then on the other, he did it in another side. I felt the pinch. But you know how they start digging the needle down in, and then I felt like nerves, and it was like, oh. Well, anyway, what I really wanted to say about that, if you have had to have blood drawn recently, like in the last few years even, and even with this Novocaine, the needles are so tiny and so thin that it doesn't hardly even hurt. You know, I used to dread giving, uh, what, when I had to do a blood draw or something, you know, it was like, oh, here's my arm. And, but now I can hardly feel them put the needle in my arm. Now I did feel the needle go into my gum because it was two pinches. And then it did kind of hit that nerve thing. But you know, it's not like it used to be ladies. They're, it, they really have it down. And so I, I just wanted to mention that um, that we've come a long way in needles. Okay, I am along with moving because you guys know I've moved and started a new transition in life. And for anybody that has moved recently or is going to move, you know, there's so many loose ends that you have to take care of. And, uh, you know, for example, getting the, um, changing all your utilities, um, you know, ch an address change, letting, like right now, what I, what I have totally forgotten to do is I had a prescription. I got a notice, a text notice that said, your prescription is ready at Walgreens. Well, I thought, oh, I have to drive all the way back to Palm Springs. 
to get my prescription from Walgreens. Now, I knew I could probably get it transferred to a Walgreens here in Indio or the La Quinta area, but I thought I'm going to go this one last time to Walgreens and ask the pharmacist about how I go about changing pharmacies because, you know, I haven't done that in over 30 years. So as it was because of COVID, I guess, there were probably eight cars in line. I didn't go in to, I was going to go in and then I thought, no, I'm going to go to the drive up window because there's never been anybody there. Well, anyway, there were like eight cars. So I just, you know, I just waited. And then when it was my turn, I did ask the pharmacist, you know, I said, because they won't give you your medication until you tell them what your address is. So I told him my old address and I said, but you know, I've moved, so I need a new pharmacy. I need, how do I do that? Do you guys call? Do I call? Do they call you? And he said, no, you call your doctor. Tell your doctor that you've moved. And, and, and I thought, well, of course, because my doctor doesn't have my new address. So I, you know, along with the list of everything else that has to be taken care of when you move, don't forget about that. And, uh, and like uh, getting my the, the address on my license changed. It's not just getting your mail forwarded to a new address. You know, there's a ton of new address. I mean, even Amazon, eBay, you know, it's I have to do all a whole new address situation. So, uh, so anyway, I was, it was kind of like the last thing on my checkoff list, list was, uh, getting my uh, pharmacy changed to my new um, address. And uh, for those of us that are on Medicare, I don't know about you guys, but the, the plan that I'm on, I have to get, and they remind me, which they've just done, I have to have a well checkup slash physical once a year. And tomorrow I'm going. So, and they actually are paying me $15 to go. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. So I'm going tomorrow morning and then they'll, you know, they'll do whatever they do. I don't, I don't, they may send me over to the lab and get blood drawn. I'm not sure, whatever. But, um, so I get, so anyway, that I look forward to them reminding me it's time for my physical and for, for me to just keep up on that. So I'm doing that in the morning and then, uh, I have two things that I want to talk about, but here's a fun one. As I have a wall here in my office, I'm, I'm facing the wall and it is, I have crosses on it. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll let you guys get on it. You've seen it before. See those little crosses? Well, they're, they're a little bit lost on that wall and I wanted to add more crosses. At least one to the left in the middle, one to the right in the middle. And so I was checking out, you know, I was looking at the wall and I was looking at the size of crosses that I might need and so on. So I went online, I went to eBay, I went to uh, Mexican, uh, re rustic Mexican crosses. I, I just Googled a lot of things and wall crosses, that was the keyword. And so I, I ran, I, oh, there's so many of them. They're like so cool, they're really nice. So, mm. I saw this cross, it caught my eye. So I looked at it and smiled and I thought that is the cutest little thing. So I, you know, it, I didn't think in terms of purchasing it, but I did stop to look at it because it caught my eye. So I scrolled down, I scrolled down and I was putting um, like a heart or clicking the star. In other words, one of my favorites as I was going down the page so that I could go back and look at, I wanted, I wanted to get two. So um, I, as I, you know, as I was scrolling around and navigating through the cross sites, I, you know, I kind of kept going back to this one little cross because it was just so dear. Well, then I did click on it to enlarge it and to find out more about the description of it. And this is, this is my take on it. It appeared to be made by a child and it appeared to have been put on eBay by the child's father with a little note, like something like my child made this or whatever. And it was, I think it was $6.50. I 
Well, I thought that was so dear. Well, I didn't purchase it. I, I kept scrolling and I kept looking and so on. Well, then I think maybe the next day I went back in, in search of just window shopping for crosses. Well, I ended up buying this little cross and it came today. So I have to share it with you. First of all, it came in this box. And if I can get in touch with this family, I'm going to, to tell them to watch this video. Um, and it came from, and I thought, I didn't order anything little. I just ordered it. I couldn't believe it arrived already. I thought, what did I order that's that size? And it came from, well, I want to say it came from Mexico. No, it came from here. It came from one of the cities down Valley. At least that's what this is earmarked. And it came in this little paper that says Casa Coachella. And I just kind of tore it right down here. Now, you're just going to love this. Now, look. Okay, here it is. This is the essence of it. But look at what's on this. Can't you just see a little child finding all these little things? Look at little, just little tiny items to put on your hair. It's like from a scapula. I think that's what they're called, that Catholics wear with little, this beautiful gold frame around it. This has like little coins, maybe from a game or something. A little, like a marble type thing. Then when you go further down, there's a horseshoe and a little ladybug looking rock or something. And this is a picture from like a magazine or something. And then look at, like the colors of Mexico, yellow, red, green, I think that's, or maybe Africa, I don't know. But isn't that just the cutest thing? And I just can see a little child maybe making that and finding what they felt was so pretty and shiny. And um, like all the, all the nice, nice um, items that they could find and they made their cross. And so it's got a nice little, uh, hanger upper and the father or mother or whoever you know it's on I thought maybe it was popsicle sticks at first but it's really wood so I cannot wait to put it on my wall I just think it's the dearest thing so thank you I love it I'm so glad I got it all right here's my serious topic tonight COVID as you guys know Christmas is coming Christmas is coming and I, my tradition is um, that my daughter and I enjoy Christmas Eve. We enjoy Christmas morning together. After we've had our Christmas morning breakfast, after we've opened gifts, after we've slept in, we get dressed, we pack a bag, and we drive out to my sister's who lives near my mother. And so at that time, we get to visit with my sister and her kids, my mother, and whoever else shows up at my sister's house. And, and so that sort of has been the tradition. Well, now I am a baby boomer, and you guys that are watching that are my audience, I'll say, are usually around my age, and many of you are baby boomers as well. Well, I know they have like baby boomers, they have millennials, they have Gen Xers, they have <laughs> whatever names they have. Well, my daughter, who's 40, and her cousins, who are like adults, 30s, and their wife, that generation is being very, very strict regarding COVID. And so... For um, for Thanksgiving, my daughter didn't even said, don't bother driving me in to the relatives because she said, I'm not going because of COVID. I don't want to catch COVID. And so I was like, oh, okay. Well, so we ended up not doing anything for Thanksgiving. I stayed home. She stayed home. So that now here it is Christmas. And so my I wanted to go, I want to go to my sister's house, but 
her, her sons, who are coming, of course, to their mom and dads and whatever, they said that they want everybody that will be there to be COVID free and to have proof of that, basically. To isolate, I have to start isolating, I think, today, I don't know. And, um, and they mean isolate, like stay in your house. Or plan B was to get a COVID test two days before Christmas, I guess. And then if you're negative, which I'm sure I'm negative, then isolate for those two days and then you can join, you can come to Christmas. Well, okay, so at first, when I first heard that, when I got the text message about option one, option two, I thought, oh, well, okay, yeah, I'll isolate. Well, my idea of isolating is following the government guidelines. That if I go out, which, you know, I don't deliberately go out, but if I do need to go out, you know, I needed to go out to get my medication today. Uh, I needed to go out to go to the grocery store today. So I needed to go out to buy some uh, wrapping paper today, but I didn't because I thought I've already gone two places. I'm going to go home. I'll do that another time. So anyway, I said, can there be an option three? Because I'm healthy. I, um, today I went to the endodontist and I had my temperature taken. I had my mask on and I was sanitized, hand sanitized. And if that, if that's good enough for the dent, the dent or the endodontist office, shouldn't that be, and it's good enough for the state guideline, shouldn't that be good enough for the Christmas get together? And they said, no, that it's not going to be good enough and that I need to, I totally isolate or take a COVID test. Okay, so on my way to get my prescription, I passed a library, the Rancho Mirage Library, and that is a site where they are COVID testing. Well, there must have been 800 cars. I'm not kidding you. And they had it all roped off. So the cars were like parked like this. You know, they weren't parked all down the street. They were like, it was like a Disneyland line. And there, I mean, it was like a huge deal. It was like going to a, a, a ball game or something, going to a stadium game. And so I thought, and they had big flashing signs, you know, COVID testing site, COVID testing. And so I thought, well, anyway, it kind of freaked me out. I thought, oh my gosh, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to go to the library and sit in that stupid line. So, um, so anyway, I said I didn't want to have to do that. Well, they said, too bad. If you want to come to the Christmas get together, you have to do you have to do that. So I don't know what I'm. I don't know. And then I talked to my brother, and he's totally opposite. They're like, you know, COVID's a big joke. Well, you know, I I don't know about that, but I they're not like you know option one, option two. So they said if I instead of me just staying home, I could always go to their house, and um, they have a they have like an apartment in the back and I could stay in the apartment. So at any rate, and that my mom was isolating. So I, so what, I'm not gonna be able to see my mother? My, you know, my 92 year old mother? I, well, anyway, I'm just devastated because like I said to my sister, I can't lie about it and say I've been, I've been isolating if I haven't. And I can't lie and say I was COVID tested if I haven't been. So, you know, I have to be true to what the what the regime, what the fascists are saying. No, I'm kidding. So anyway, uh, I'm kind of bummed about that, but you know, we'll see. In the meantime, uh, I I had a um, a fun visitor over this afternoon. One of one of my neighbor gal friends, and I'll have to tell you that her story and my story another time. That's kind of a fun story. So I just wanted to touch base. I wanted to complain about the COVID business. I wanted to talk about my, um, you know, my checkoff list for all the stuff that I have to do when, when, when I move or when anybody moves. Lot, uh, just a lot to consider and that, um, oh, and then the other thing that I wanted to tell you real quick, but I'll, I'll put this in another video. Yesterday, I had the, per, the lady that bought my house over for lunch and we had the best time. She was, hit. we chit chatted, she brought pictures of the house, certain things she's done and um, 
anyway, she's just a doll and we had a, we had a lot of fun together. So I'll, I'll tell you more about our, that lunch date and I'll tell you uh, more about my, my neighbor friend as well. Okay, you guys, P.S. I love you. Um, and until our next conversation.